This is CNN Breaking News. Good morning and welcome to your new day. We do begin with breaking news. The Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said moments ago that the U.S. drone strike in Baghdad that killed Iran's top security intelligence official, he said it was to prevent an imminent attack on U.S. interests in the Middle East, although he would not provide us with the intelligence behind that information. Uh, we are also now just getting new information about when the president was presented with options to prevent that attack and who in Congress was briefed about it much earlier this week. Let's get straight to our Caitlin Collins for the breaking details. Caitlin, what can you tell us? Well, we're learning more about how this decision process was made. Senator Lindsey Graham was just on Fox News, and he says that when he was down here in Palm Beach with the president, he was briefed on the idea that this could happen, on this potential operation, which, of course, became an operation that it was actually carried out by the United States, which the Pentagon confirmed last night. Now, Lindsey Graham, we saw him exclusively from CNN footage golfing with the president on Monday. They were riding in the same cart together at points, speaking pretty closely. And then he was here the next day as well, seen through photos that other users had posted on social media being here. And he says it was during that time that he had been discussing this with the president and what the next steps would be after this. Listen to how he described his discussions with the president during this interview just a few moments ago. I was briefed about the, the potential operation when I was down in Florida. I appreciate being brought into the orbit. I really appreciate President Trump letting the world know you cannot kill an American without impunity. We will stand up for our people, and that is an absolutely essential message. So you see Leonard, Senator Lindsey Graham there talking about this, clearly someone who came out in support of the measure last night, saying it was the right thing to do. Now, the question, of course, is what's going to be next? Lindsey Graham has said he believes that oil refineries in Iran is something that should be on the table. He's talking about essentially crushing them economically was the phrase that he used, talking about the word crushing. So that's really going to be the question here is how the United States responds, what they do next, how Iran responds, of course. And those are questions that we're still waiting to hear and also still waiting to hear from the president himself on this. All right, Kaylin Collins for us in Florida. Uh, it's an interesting piece of information there. Why would Senator Lindsey Graham, who's the chair of the Judiciary That's right. Committee in the Senate, why would he be briefed about this imminent threat? Days before action was taken. Days before imminent action was taken and, and before the Gang of Eight, uh, which what, includes the joint right? leadership uh, in Congress. So that is crucial information. It's information I did not know, by the way. When I spoke with U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo moments ago, I had a discussion with him much more about the decision that was made and what led to it mm -hmm. to kill this Iranian leader, Qasem Soleimani. Okay, back with us, Caitlin Collins, our chief national uh, security correspondent, Jim Shudo, and CNN senior international correspondent, Arwa Damon. Caitlin, to you, uh, huge question this morning. Why was the chair of the Judiciary Committee, <laughs> Lindsey Graham, <laughs> briefed on this, and uh, uh, to our knowledge, no members of the Gang of Eight. Yeah, as of last night, there had been no formal briefing for the Gang of Eight on this strike being carried out. So those are the questions that are now being raised by critics of the president and some Democrats asking why uh, not only were they not briefed, why was there not congressional authorization for this? And you see Senator Lindsey Graham saying that he was briefed, he was happy he was briefed on this potential operation. The question is, if he, was he briefed before the president made the decision to go through with this or after the president made the decision? We do know that Lindsey Graham was here at Mar-a-Lago right behind me over my shoulder on Monday and Tuesday. He was seen out on the golf course with the president on Monday. The two were in the same golf cart riding together at times, speaking closely, though that's not unusual because you often see them out on the links together. But what is unusual is now that Lindsey Graham is saying he was briefed on this ahead of time. There are going to be questions from other members of Congress about being briefed on this. We're still waiting to hear more on that. And as you heard from Secretary Pompeo, he was uh, pretty quiet on some of the details when it came to when the president made this decision and who was notified about this. So those are still things that we're waiting to learn. We didn't see that in mm -hmm. the statement from the Pentagon last night, which is the only thing we heard from the White House so far. They were referring us to that until, of course, the president started tweeting this morning. But we are yet to hear from him in person. Jim Shudo, why is it important? to go through traditional processes like informing the Gang of Eight. Why is it significant that President Trump chose to brief or tell his friend Lindsey Graham about this before telling others? Listen, I've spoken to senior members of the Trump administration who say that he has upended 
bypassed, uh, even dismantled the national security infrastructure of this country through, through multiple administrations. It's not a Democratic Republican thing. You have hundreds of people who, whose job it is to help develop, develop policy and inform the president of the consequences, potential consequences of his decision. This president has chosen to bypass that repeatedly. Look at the Syria withdrawal. Uh, it, you know, that surprised everybody, including commanders on the ground, and, and oftentimes the policymaking follows that decision. That has consequences, because you want your president to be informed yeah. when he makes decisions, especially when lives, when lives are on the line. This president has chosen not to. And, and if you look at him talking to his pal, the Judiciary Committee chairman, as opposed to the gang in eight, and by the way, there are reporting responsibilities, too, between the president and Congress, because constitutionally, mm -hmm. Congress has the, has the ability to wage war, uh, to declare war. Um, but but we, we've seen this template before, right? For instance, say, when his personal attorney is running Ukraine policy, mm -hmm. right, over those folks in government whose job is, it is designed to do. So, so Americans at home have to decide if that is a policy-making infrastructure and process that they're comfortable with. Look, bottom line is you, you want U.S. allies, you want bipartisan support when you are involved in operations that put Americans' lives on the line. So that's of why course. some of this stuff matters. So let's get back to the... the significance of the man that has been assassinated by the United States because Arwa, you're live for us in Baghdad this morning. General Soleimani's uh, impact, his power for decades cannot be overstated. How significant is taking him out? Uh, monumentous in the sense that it really puts the region into uncharted territory. You basically now have the U.S. declaring war on Iran because this is exactly what it's going to be viewed as by Tehran inside Iraq's borders. And not just that. This, from the perspective of the Iraqi government, is an act of aggression by the United States, which was meant to be an ally of Baghdad on Iraqi soil, a violation of its sovereignty, because not only was Qasem Soleimani killed in this, but so too was the second in command of what's known as the popular mobilization force. And so from the government's perspective, an ally just carried out an assassination, killing uh, one of its own top military commanders, not to mention the top military commander, the most revered uh, individual of Tehran, a very close ally to Baghdad um, as well. And then if we look at the dynamics that are already unfolding here um, in Iraq, you have this popular mobilization force that I was talking about. It is an umbrella Shia paramilitary uh, force that's mostly made up of former Shia militia groups who gained the bulk of their experience fighting in Iraq's sectarian civil war, but also fighting <coughs> against the U.S. military presence during America's occupation here. They were getting their funding, their training, their weapons um, from Tehran. They are now all at the ready. Radical Shia cleric Muqtada al-Sadr has decided that he is going to unfreeze his Mehdi army. You have some voices here trying to urge calm, or at least trying to urge people to take sort of a more rational position. But what you have is a situation that is going to escalate very, very quickly with dynamics right now that are not yet foreseen. And what is especially disturbing in all of this is that it does not seem at this stage as if America has a plan for what happens next. One can only assume right. that Iran has been ready for something similar to this, even if it wasn't exactly this scenario. And, and that last point Aro brought up to me is one of the three yeah. big questions this morning. Number one is what does happen next? What is the response by Iran? And is the United States ready for this? Will this cost American lives? That's a real question. The other question I still have after talking to Mike Pompeo is why now, he said it was based on an imminent threat, thwarting mm -hmm. some kind of attack, killing Soleimani, he said, saved American lives. He gave some kind of a vague promise they would release what information they could. Yeah. But we don't have that information yet, and that's key. Listen, President Trump has not been loath to declassify summarily information in the past. It, it may be that the president provides details on this that, mm -hmm. that Secretary Pompeo was not, was not willing to do to justify it. The other point I would make, and, and good for Arwa for bringing this up, Muqtad al-Sadr that runs this Shia uh, group, which has, in effect, its own kind of domestic army, has the ability to turn Iraq upside down. I remember you were there, too, covering the Iraq war you know, a number of years ago, it, that, that when he was 
not on the U.S. side or willing to disrupt, he could turn the country upside down. If he chooses to do so internally, this, again, just shows you, you know, how the consequences of this can go far beyond, you know, uniformed, uh, regular uh, attacks and to, to asymmetric or things with some plausible deniability, a little distance from Iran, et cetera. There are real dangers today for Americans in that country. Jim, thank you so much. Appreciate the expertise, all your reporting. Caitlin, to you as well. And Arwa, so valuable to have you there. We appreciate it.